football life. We're going to be covering a lot of kilometres this year to bring you football culture. This week we travel about four hours each way to bring you a slice of Tasmanian football folklore in one of the most unique towns in all of Tasmania. Exists definitely the most unique ground in Tasmania where you can see a game of footy where few men go to ground but those who do really pay for it. Let's have a look at football culture in Queenstown on the gravel. Welcome to Footy Culture in Queenstown, the most unique football ground in all of Australia. The southwest of Tasmania is famous for its wilderness and its rugged weather, for its lush rainforest, its hue and pine and its wild rivers. But three and a half hours of very windy driving west of Hobart takes you to one of the most amazing towns in Tasmania. As you come around the very thin road that surrounds Mount Lyle, you eventually find the rugged lunar landscape that lets you know you've arrived in the historic wild west copper city of Queenstown. Queenstown was established in 1891 around the Mount Lyle copper mine. During its peak it had a population of 7,000 people, but today it's dropped to about three. Although the mines still operate strongly, the local economy has become more reliant on tourism, with ventures such as the recently reopened Apt Railway behind me, which will soon be taking passengers all the way from Queenstown through the pristine southwest wilderness, the wild rivers, and the 40 bridges that connect Queenstown to the west coast fishing village of Strawn. That night, our cameraman and his wife enjoyed the comforts of the Silver Hills Motel, while the rest of us were lucky enough to be put up at the Mountain View Holiday Lodge, formerly the single man's quarters for the Mount Lyle Mine. The current owner, Jerry Mepcher, started his days in Queenstown as a single man in those quarters and 33 years later he bought them from Mount Lyle and he and his wife Shirley have set up a unique holiday lodge. Driving through the streets our attention was caught by a bright green house with a beer can Christmas tree. We knocked on the door and soon got chatting with local Queenstown icon, Lawrence. Before I knew it I was at 7XS radio station, which almost everyone in Queenstown seems to listen to and be on. I talked up local footy with host Weddy, who after his Saturday morning footy show pulls on the boots at full forward for the Queenstown Crows. After the radio show, it was off to meet Queenstown historian Ray Shea. Football is a huge part of small communities in Tasmania and none more so than Queenstown. The community feel of football, the importance of it to people. How does that work? That's right. Well, uh, particularly with the mining industry, and that's a pretty hazardous type of job and, and it's... Um, it creates a lot of tension and that sort of thing. And uh, you've got to have some type of sport that, um, that you need to do to have relaxation after you've had your heavy day at work. And, uh, you know, football does play a, a great part in the social side of, uh, of any township, or any mining township. And um, tell us about the ground here at Queenstown. It's very famous for its gravel, but it's not actually gravel? No, it's silica. Right? Uh, it's a, the, silica is a soft term, and that was a, silica was a flux that they used in the smelters mm -hmm. uh, when they put it in through the furnaces, and that was one of the fluxes that brought the mineral out of the rock, and that sort of thing after it had been smelted. And it's really a sandstony uh, substance, you know, and... Uh, and what, why is, is that, Ray? Is it, is it there because Queenstown footballers are hard and they think everyone else should be hard and you should play on a hard surface, or is there another reason for having the silica? No, well... Well, if, if we'd have had a grassed area here, uh, we would never have been able to play on it. Uh, yeah, well, there was times when you were, there was something like 350 footballers that used that ground from one Sunday to another, and no, no, no turf ground would have put up with that. Bearing in mind, we have our 10 to 12 feet of rain a year, um, but there'd be no other ground where they could uh, possibly... Uh, use you know well as um we found out rosebury gets uh, gets full of mud every winter so yes, I guess that's the alternative yeah, isn't it so either right. play on the silica or play yeah. on the mud yeah, yeah that's right yeah. also we noticed the uh the bike tracks very close to the boundary line has that caused a few incidents over the years it's certainly very close well it, it hasn't when we were you know in our local competition but now we've been the darwin they seem to uh don't like it but um uh, it's one of those things that you, you've got to put up with it. But we've, we've brought the ground, the boundary in a metre for them. That's to, hopefully that's satisfied. Was us. the boundary line originally on the yeah, Ashfield itself? The Ashfield was the actual boundary line there. <laughs> My word. So at least you knew where you stood. <laughs> <laughs> My word. The men of the West Coast are hard men when it comes to their footy, aren't they? Oh, no, you learn to you learn to respect it and uh, use it correctly. Oh, okay. 
Certainly, I saw quite a few big pebbles in the uh, in the oval as well as uh, the asphalt. So, looking forward to seeing how the two clubs handle that today. We might go and meet a few people around the town, Ray, if you'd yes. like to join us, and perhaps yes. you could go to the ground with us. Yes, yeah, right then. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. Money's always a big issue in regional footy, and the Evans Family Store here in Queenstown on the main street has sponsored the Queenstown Football Club for many years now. Phil, these are your Kennebec potato specials for today, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a Saturday Spud special. Uh, all the wives of the footballers come down on the day and uh, snap up a spud while their, their husbands are mentor, mentally preparing for the game. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Now, how long has the store been in your family for, Phil? Uh, this year will be 104 years. 104 years? Uh -huh. So you're the fourth generation... Yeah, fourth generation lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> and the original store's just down the street. It's been done up, I believe. Yeah, we're, uh, it's actually a heritage listed building, so uh, in conjunction with the TAS Heritage Commission, we're, we're looking at restoring that and turning it into a... A, a real tourist attraction. Fantastic. And right. how long have you sponsored the footy club for? Um, well, I've been associated and running the store now for about five years, and for that time we've, uh, we've sponsored the, the footy club. Football has been played on the west coast of Tasmania since before the turn of the century. As new mines popped up in new areas, so too did new football associations. In 1924, the Queenstown Football Association was formed. But in the second half of the century, as mines closed and populations decreased, sides folded and merged. 1976 saw the formation of one single Queenstown Football Club, who in 1993 joined the Darwin Football Association and in 1997 went on to beat Caprona to become Premiers. Today, the Queenstown Football Club is taking on West Alveston. Before lunch, I met up with Ray Shea. We headed down to the Queenstown ground, had a quick chat with gatekeeper Gary before going inside to check out at close range the famous Queenstown gravel. I hear the West Olmston uh, boys haven't arrived yet. No, no, about apparently, a bus. apparently the bus broke down in Penguin. Yeah, that's not far away from Olmston, is it? No. Are they scared of the gravel, Gary? Is that what's going, oh, really going on? I reckon they are. Yeah? There's not many teams like gravel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go out and have a look, eh, Ray? Right, then, David. <laughs> Here, on the middle of the Queenstown Oval, it really is quite amazing. The surface is a combination of sand, silica, small pebbles, and there's a few jagged rocks in there as well. And this ground is about to be listed on the National Heritage Trust. Let's do a little key test and see what it's like underneath. Yep, as I thought, pretty rough on the surface, but underneath it's quite soft. Away goes C, what a move. Straight into the centre, Queenstown, away from gravity, smothers it. Oh. West Olverson Football Club was established in 1976. They joined the Darwin Football Association in 1982, and in 1985 they won both reserves and senior premierships. They originally played as the Hawks and then changed to the Bulldogs. They sold their Bulldogs jumpers to Caprona and then became the West Olverson Lions. They've made a two and a half hour trip to Queenstown today to play the Queenstown Crows. By Kingston comes through to McLean, eludes the players, onto Keating, Keating onto Wed, and a nice snap. Queenstown made first use of the gravelly conditions to put the first three goals on the board, and then continued on with the next 20. Through a combination of hard running through the middle, excellent handball, and some strong marking on their forward line, they dominated the first half. Although their forwards took mark after mark, I didn't see one of them go to the gravelly ground on Queenstown. Just before half-time, Tempest Flair, the things got a little bit emotional. Brent, 148 points up at half-time. What a great effort. It's almost looked like a training video out there of, uh, of using the handball and kicking the position. It's been a fantastic effort by your boys, and the West Olsen have been pretty soft. Yeah, West Olsen have been soft, and I don't think it's a real indication of like how we could be playing. I think a couple of times we're starting to hold the ball a bit much, not giving first options. So after half time, hopefully we'll work on that and play a little bit more to what the plan was before the game. Now it's time for my favourite part of football life. Usually it's a sap test, but today at the Queenstown Canteen, it's a pasty test. Avis and Dawn, I believe the Queenstown ladies are famous Australia-wide for their pasties. Is yes, that true? That's true. And how long have you been associated with football in the West Coast, Avis? Well, I started off when I was at school in 1942, but I was away since 1956. I've been a regular member. My word, that's a great yes. commitment. And Dawn, yourself? Same. Oh, pretty much the same, yeah. And the, the mixture inside the pasty, what sort of vegetables are the best to make a good pasty? Carrots, sweet, parsnip, onions. Yep. And what and sort of meat goes in there? Mince. 
Some mints? And where do you get the mints from? <laughs> local butcher, Jimmy, thanks. <laughs> when cooking a pasty, should it be cooked in a really hot oven or a moderate uh, oven? More of a moderate oven. Yeah. And what's the reason for that? Well, burn them otherwise, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm ready to give this one a go now. Can we have a bit of sauce with that, Avis? Is that standard? Do most people have sauce with the pasty? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, very few refuse. All right, freshly cooked pasty from the Queenstown canteen. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. The pastry's great. I'll give it seven and a half out of ten. West Olveston bounced back in the second half with a couple of steadying goals, and then Queenstown answered with about 20 or so of their own. Young Weddy, who we met at the radio station earlier that day, certainly didn't let his media commitments get in the way of him kicking an absolute bag. Queenstown looked absolutely at home playing on the gravel and ran out easy winners 44-26, 290 to West Olveston, 2-3-15. With the result of the game so far out of question, all we had left to do was talk to the young goal umpire. Goal score today, it's been a busy day for goal yeah, umpires. Yeah, pretty busy today. Have there been any tough decisions? Uh, not really. No? And uh, can you give us another quick look, uh, close up of the, uh, of the two fingers, just into the, uh, into the camera of the style here? You're a very stylish young man. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> stuff. After the game, we caught up with West Olveston coach Nathan Gibson, had a look at his gravel rash and found out why he was glad this game was finally over. That night, we had plenty of laughs in the Queenstown club rooms, and certainly this is one town we'll take a lot of fond memories away from. All we had to do the next day was take a very short drive down the road back to Hobart. Come on! Well, there you have it. Football culture in Queenstown would like to say a big thank you to Ray Singline and to Rowan Smith for the music used in this.